guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're trying a new angle today. I mean, I've been trying to do some like, you know, fancy angles with like high angle that look nicer, but you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. I am way more comfortable with this angle. So we're gonna do this one. And I, I kinda like this better than Nick I was going to, because you know what they say the higher angle makes you look better, but you guys watched the video Monday. You know what I look like. <laughs> so we're going with this. So I like this. This feels more comfortable to me. I don't know. You guys not even see a difference. I don't know. Anyway, that's not what this is about. This is another Fave Fives. Again, with Fave Fives, they are my favorites. Not the best, okay? And I like shitty movies, so none of these are particularly shitty in my opinion, but you know, some people may not like them as much as I do, but that's okay, because they're subjective, objective, subjective. I am off topic already. We're doing great. We're doing fan-fucking-tastic, but it is the spooky season. It is the time of the pumpkin. So from here on out, it's probably going to be all Halloween all the time for me. Except for on Fridays, I'm still going to be doing Chucky because goddamn that show was good. And the episode, a new episode comes on tonight. I filmed this on a Tuesday, so I'll be filming on Thursday my review for the new episode of Chucky, which will come out on Friday. So I'm excited about that. So anyway, this is my fave five Halloween horror movies. These are horror movies that just make me feel like in the mood for the spoop. This is, I have to watch these in October, every October. These put me in that Halloween mood, okay? So these are all gonna be set on Halloween and they are gonna have a quintessential Halloween feel. There's a lot of movies set on Halloween that don't feel like Halloween, right? You know what I mean? You, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, I want some trick-or-treaters. I want some fall leaves. I want it to be Halloween. Anyway, let's get right into it with my favorite kind of movie, an anthology movie. Number five is Tales of Halloween from 2015. I love anthology movies because I have the intention span of a gnat. But this one is like... This is an anthology movie. <laughs> there are 10 friggin' segments in this. It's amazing. There's like literally something for everyone in this movie. It is extremely hilarious. <laughs> it is off the wall. It's over the top. There's all kinds of shit going on. It's great, okay? It's great. I think this movie's fan fucking fantastic. And there are so many horror legend cameos in this. It's absolutely redonkulous. When was the last time you heard somebody say redonkulous? Wow. So, like, Adrian Barbeau, I believe she's narrating the whole thing. Lynn Shea shows up. Caroline Williams. Barbara Crampton. Felissa Rose. Mick Garris. Stuart Gordon. Adam Green. They just pop up everywhere. Some of them have little parts. Some of them have bigger parts. But they're there. And it's fantastic. So if you haven't seen Tales of Halloween, go see Tales of Halloween. It is a amazing anthology movie okay so moving on to number four which is probably well no I wouldn't say our most serious movie but it is the only found footage movie on the list though and that is The House is October Bill uh, I love me a found footage film uh, I love horror attraction movies like I done a whole list on horror attraction movies so I, 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 fan, I, I love them, <laughs> right? And this is a really good one. This feels like Halloween. They're going to all the different horror attractions. This has a really weird story. Like the second one, I don't know if it's so much, but I know that this is like half documentary and half horror movie, which is kind of cool. Like some of the beginning part, like you can't really tell where it changes. You can, but it's fairly seamless. They do a great job with it. But, like, it kind of changes from, like, an actual documentary where 
the people they're talking to and the haunts they're going to is real. Like they, it's not staged. It's they, they go there and they're filming a documentary. Like they're actually interviewing scare actors and stuff. And then I do believe it's about the time when the little porcelain girl come, shows up where it starts morphing more into an actual movie and we get into the blue skeleton group and everything then that's all fake but the beginning of the movie is pretty much all real so that's really fucking cool i thought that was it's like for gorilla filmmaking or something so houses october build is great the sequel is great as well but there's a little bit more suspension of disbelief because you know that like i don't want to spoil the movie but the fan footage part kind of, it doesn't feel as real in the second one, right? Because you know they survived the first one, so it's less threatening, okay? That's what I mean. But it does have a really cool twist ending, so I like that. Okay, so moving on to number three is Terrifier. Now, I could have included all of the All Hallows Eve kind of universe franchise in here, because that is very Halloween. All Hallows Eve, I love both of them. All Hallows Eve and All Hallows Eve 2 are great, but Terrifier, I fell in love <laughs> with that movie when first when I saw it. It's so out there, it's so over the top, and it makes my little gorehound heart happy because it is a gory movie. Art the Clown is terrifying and hilarious, so yeah. It's Terrifier. I absolutely love it. Um, hi, Doggo. Here's our... Here we go. Obligatory dog walking past. Yeah. Happens every time, doesn't it? <laughs> he just likes to come in. Oh my gosh, it's like the same. Anyway, Terrifier. Art the Clown, fantastic. Main character has the same name as me. She just spells it different, but her name is Tara. So I've always found that funny. And it does feel like Halloween. They're in costumes. There's Halloween decorations up. They, a guy gets his head turned into a jack-o'-lantern. Like, what's more Halloween than that? So, Terrifier, fantastic. So number two. And I always get hate. Like, I, I don't get hate because you guys are amazing. And you understand that opinions are opinions right and everybody's list is going to be different but i always feel like i'm going to get hate for my number twos because they're usually everybody else's number ones but number two is the entire halloween franchise the whole thing now for myself <laughs> the one that feels the most seasonal the most trick-or-treaty the most halloweeny is season of the witch i am a defender of season of the witch um I feel like with Halloween Kills, having the silver shamrock, like specifically with the logo on the back of the masks, that somewhat uh, Halloween 3 is canon now. Somewhat. I don't know if the supernatural parts of it is, but like, we have freaking Professor Michael Myers, so if that's canon, then silver shamrock can be canon, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I just feel like that's the most Halloween of all of them. Not Halloween the series, not Michael Myers, but the most trick-or-treaty, like the most Halloween-ish, the most seasonal of all the Halloween films is probably Season of the Witch, in my opinion. Now, number four, yes, part four, has a lot of trick-or-treaty stuff. Like, they go get a costume for little Jamie, and yeah, like that one's very Halloween-y as well. But the whole Halloween series, in general, like, <laughs> that's just a given. It's just the easy answer. But my number one that I just cannot get through October without watching, and specifically, I watch this every October 31st, Trick or Treat. The 2007 anthology movie, Trick or Treat. <laughs> it's, it's, it is Halloween. Like, it is Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I love anthology movies, we've established this, but Trick or Treat just, it just, <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it, but it is Halloween, honestly. Like, it just feels that cozy fallness, that spookiness, and it's fun. 
every story I love. I love the wraparound, <laughs> little Sam. He's so cute. I love the werewolf girls. I love the ghost kids. I love the shitty vampire dude. Like, and how they all intermingled. This movie is fan-fucking-tastic. So, yeah. That is my list of my favorite five Halloween horror movies. Uh, you can go ahead and tell me what you like, what you don't like, down in the comments. And I'm gonna go edit this, put it up, and... I don't know. Probably watch Trick or Treat now. <laughs> I'm gonna be watching a few more. I wanna do lesser known Halloween movies as well. Um, there's one that came out last year that I'm interested in seeing. I have to track it down. I may have to use nefarious means, but I am gonna track it down because I am a Hayao Slipknot fan and somehow I did not know that Corey Taylor did a movie last year called Bad Candy that is a Halloween anthology movie. So I may be reviewing that <laughs> at some point within the next week. Okay? <laughs> but I'm gonna have to find it first. And like I say, it's probably not gonna be easy to find and I'm probably gonna have to use nefarious means to find it. But, <clears throat> whatever. If I can find it to buy, I probably will as well, because I love Corey Taylor, and I love Halloween anthology movies. So there's no bad here. Even if it's a shit movie, there's no bad here. So yeah, I'm gonna go, and I will see you on Friday for what is going to be my Chucky episode 2 review, which I think is going to be a Halloween episode, because it says something about candy. That's going to be interesting, which will be very fitting and on brand and on theme. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!